the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Minister Arthur L. Weathersby from Sound the Alarm Ministries. Amen. Joel 2.1. And our motto is, we are crying loud and sparing not. That's from Isaiah 58.1. Uh, praise God. I'm one half of Sound the Alarm Ministries. My wife, um, Pastor Vanza Sherry O. Weathersby, is the other half of that. Amen. We're going to do something different here today. Um, this is Sound the Alarm Ministries presents. Now a word from our sponsor, uh, live conference call, live podcast via Spreaker.com and Facebook go live video. What's happening right now, y'all? We're going to do a simulcast, amen, of messages. Right now, anybody on Facebook uh, page of my wife, Pastor Evangelist Sherry O'Weathersby, is listening to her, amen, and the call that is going forth. She has the phone for the conference call. But the Holy Ghost told me we're going to go ahead and, and do what we need to do from my end. Amen. Because we're doing a live podcast on my laptop, on my iPad, as a matter of fact. Uh, she's using her laptop for uh, uh, a podcast there. And then we got the Facebook Go Live video. So we're, gonna, we're not going to tarry. We're going to go forth and do what God would have us to do. And we're just grateful and thankful unto him for all that he does. Amen. So let me see. I'm going to see if I can do something here. Amen. And uh, just to get us going. Well, I guess I won't. I was looking for uh, the CD um, that we have for our theme song, and we don't have that with us here. I know where it's at. Amen. Because we took it to, uh, we took it with us yesterday to Bethlehem Revival Temple. Amen. Thank God for those that, uh, uh, thank God for that, that congregation there uh, under the leadership of uh, Pastor Reverend Dr. Jerome Brown and his wife. If, um, First Lady of Evangelist Mamie Brown and the brothers of the men's department and of the, the men's group, men of the United that I am a part of, Evangelist Tom Kelly and Deacon Corey Flowers, amen. And I, we thank God for them and their gracious hospitality and, and generosity toward us, amen, that allowed us to come there and preach the gospel, amen, uh, into their hearing yesterday morning. And so we took that CD with us, and, and that was our theme song, and that's how we go in. Amen. And we thank God for that. Sound the trumpet, sound the alarm. Dr. Judah Christian McAllister. Amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Um, uh-huh. I'm going to grab my anointing oil. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to go forth from here and doeth and saith what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Most gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, at this hour I come before you to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us and watching over and protecting and keeping us from last night up until now. Thank you, Father God, that as you watched over and kept us, your angels of protection were it camped round about us. No harm or danger came to us. And we woke up this morning, Father God, with full activity of our limbs and, and, and full uh, capacity within our minds, O oh Lord God. And for that, we say thank you. Father God, we also woke up this morning to the brand new mercies that you provided to us. No goodness of our own, Father God, but it was your grace and your mercy, Father God, that has brought us thus far. And it is assured of taking us all the way. Lord God, before I go further, I'm going to ask that you forgive us, forgive me. Father God, for any sin that I may have done by thought, word, or deed that was not pleasing within your sight, I absolutely must and will ask for forgiveness. Now, God, I pray as we go forth throughout this day, continue to order our steps in your word, Father God, as we allow your word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father God, be a comfort to those that need comforting right now, Father God. There are many out there that are bereaved, oh, Father God. Many are hurting, oh, Father God, for whatever reason, Father God, you're the God of all comfort, and we're praying that you comfort them right now. Father God, envelop them with your love, oh, Lord God, and all those, Father God, that uh, that may be out there, Father God, that are, for whatever reason, Father God, they're going through life, and, and they're not feeling that... Uh, things are going their way. They're distressed, depressed, Father God. We know that you are a mind regulator, so we speak the peace of Christ upon them. The Bible says that Jesus Christ says, I'm going to leave my peace with you, and my peace that I give is not like the world because my peace will remain. And I'm assured of this one thing, them that keep their mind stayed on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. So therefore, Father God, go before us or go with us, oh Father God, edge in each and every step of the way. Lead and guide us, oh Father God, and we know that we cannot go astray. 
astray. And Father God, I know as I go forth throughout this day, Father God, glorifying and giving you uh, glory, honor, and praise that's rightfully due your name. I know, Father God, that I will bless the Lord at all times, and your praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make this boast in the Lord, wherein I am extremely glad. And now, dear God, I pray that you grant me, Father God, here we go, y'all. You grant me the fresh anointing of the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit to do thy bidding and thy will at this time. Oh, Father God, endow me with power from on high, for I know that I cannot do anything without you because it's in you that I live and have my very being. And when I'm strengthened by you, Father God, I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. But it's not I that do it to work, but that you that do it for me, Father God, for you give me the will to do according to your good pleasure. And for that, I say thank you. So now, God, as I go forth throughout this time, I pray that you continue to just... Uh, take control of, the, of my life, oh Father God. Take control of me because I surrender my all unto you. Now, God, I know as I prepare to go into your word, I know that I can't, I can't do anything. I can't say anything of myself, Father God, that's going to impact people in the way that they need to be impacted. So therefore, I know that I, Arthur, I must decrease. And therefore, you, the Lord, my God, you must increase. So therefore, I'm extremely mindful to say, I'll let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer, in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, 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 amen. We thank God um, for what, um, what he's saying to us this morning. We thank God what he's about to say to us. Amen. Now what we're going to do, y'all, we're going to go to the word of God. And I'm going to read into your hearing the scripture that the Lord has for us to share with you on this day. Amen. Let us go to the gospel as described by John, the apostle, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And let us go to that 15th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verses 12 and conclude at verse 17 as the Lord leads. And as I read you today, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. The scripture reading that I will give throughout this time will absolutely come from this same Amplified Bible. It reads this way. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. No one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down and give up his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I command you to do. I do not call you servants, slaves any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, working out. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. I have revealed to you everything that I have learned from him. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed you, I have planted you, that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain, abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name as presenting all that I am, he may give it to you. Verse 17. If the word, no, this is what I, this is what I command you, that you love one another. Amen. Thus is the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord is already blessed. May he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy blessed word. But we need not just be only hearers of it, but we absolutely need and must become doers of it as well. And we pray that God opens up the heart, mind, and understanding of each and every one on this day so that they can receive what the Spirit is saying unto them. Amen, amen, amen. And we thank God, y'all, for the reading of his word. And now we're going to have a message in and we're going to, as the Holy Ghost leads, y'all, I don't know what date I wrote this down, but it was sometime this month, and I don't even have the time on there. I know it was in reference to a song I was listening to by Jessica Reedy. This is what, this is what the message is going to be today. God's love makes me do right. God's love makes me do right. Amen. We thank God. Now, what we want to talk about, amen, is understanding something in particular here, amen. We're talking about uh, uh, God's love, amen, the love of God. And we must make a distinction about that and, and saying, and the reason why we say God's love, because there's various other types of love. Matter of fact, there are two different other types of love that is known to man, and they absolutely cannot be associated with God. Like I said, they are known to man. Amen. And those types of loves are, are associated with uh, uh, things of our emotions and, 
and, and, and, and the things about what we look at, amen, they're called feelings, and, 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 and the other is about our physical attraction or erotica, amen, and, and, and the Greek speaks of these in, in two and, and, and the, the Greeks describe these in their language. Feelings is philios, and erotica is eros. Amen. These loves are the ones that are very, 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 very commonly known to man. They are intrinsic within the nature of man. Uh, a man is a touchy-feely a being. Amen. You know how it is. We got to touch it, feel it, and see it in order for us to be able to believe anything. Amen. That's where the physical attraction come in at the feet, the scene, but the touchy feely, you know, we got we gotta feel it. We gotta be able to to make sure that everything is real. Uh-huh. But don't you know that those two loves are not really real. They are temporary or temporal. Oh my God, Minister Wethersby, why are you saying that? Because understand this. And you have to be honest about the situation. If not, that's what I'm here for. Sound the alarm ministries. We are crying loud and sparing not. Oh yeah. A feelings. Feelings are something, y'all, that we all have. It's based upon our emotions. And don't you know, as it, as, as it is with us, amen, we are like cycles, y'all. We are cyclical. Amen. Sometimes we're up. Sometimes we're down. Sometimes we feel good. Sometimes we don't. There was a saying back in the day, a commercial that said, sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. Lord have mercy. That's just the truth anyhow. But that's the nature of the feeling. That's the, that's the, that's the what happens with feelings, y'all. They change. They change. And, and, and it's sad to say that, unfortunately, our understanding of love is predicated upon something that 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 uh, 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 has no real sustenance to it. Amen. Because uh, our emotions change and our feelings change, the, the love that we know will also change. Lord have mercy. We know that has happened uh, uh, in all of our lives from time to time. Amen. Especially when we love according to our feelings. Lord, have mercy, help us, Holy Ghost. Because again, uh, 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 how can you build a relationship based upon your feelings? And then knowing that you, especially if you want a relationship to endure and last, your feelings don't last. How do I know that to be so? Because it's very true. Amen. Uh, uh, you can start out in the day. We can start out in the morning. We can wake up on what we call the right side of the bed. Amen. But then we go and have an encounter with one another. And, and, and something is said or something is done. Or, or we get a certain kind of look. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that attitude, that mindset that we had when we first woke up on the right side of the bed, because there, there comes a shift. And when that shift comes, all of a sudden, our attitudes, our feelings change towards one another. Just that quick. That's the love. We, we use, when, and, and we have the audacity to use that as a foundation for our love. Let me, I submit to you, and I, and I thank God for this. Uh, and those of you that know that I am a published Christian author, amen. And the first book that I had published, uh, uh, amen, was back on uh, September 28, 2012, by Zulon Press. Uh, doc, uh, Zulon Press is the publisher, amen, for my first two books. Uh, the title of that book is uh, Unless God Builds the House. And that, and that title came from this particular scripture here, Psalm 127a. And I'm going to read that into your hearing so you get the flavor of what the book is about. Amen. Here's the title. Here's the, here's the Psalm 127, 1, A. Amen. As it reads again from the Amplified Bible. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. So now let me tell you. The premise of that book is about relationship building. But as the Lord led me by way of the Holy Ghost, I changed the whole, he changed the whole theme from just general relationship building and focus in on marriage. And, and, and why is that? Because marriage is the central theme of a relationship with one another. Oh my God, how do we know that to be so? Let us go to the Word. Let us go to the Word. Let us go to Genesis. Amen. The second chapter. Amen. Because the first relationship God established between Man and woman uh, can be found in Genesis, the second chapter. And we're going to start at that 18th verse. Genesis 2.18. Now the Lord God said, It is not good, sufficient, satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper meet, suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. 
And out of the ground the Lord God formed every wild beast and living creature of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to.